Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I do the singing thing at the beginning of every show, and it's annoying me. You can't see me. That's right. You can't see me. You know why you can't see me? Because you won't be able to see me for about, oh, I don't know, 25 minutes because we have a pre-recorded audio-only interview because the person we're interviewing doesn't have Skype. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we will have the Citizens Panel, and we will have our full show uh, in about 25 minutes from right now. But meanwhile... We have to go dial up an old friend. All right, we always have to do it this way. This is the way we start the uh, the uh, the uh, call to our old friend in California, Stephen Pearl, because he always starts out with something crazy. Here we go. Uh, it's ringing. Do I have to tell you that it's ringing? Yeah. Uh, that's what they do on radio. Let's join Bobby Troop in the songwriting process. Get your kicks on route. 57, nah, that doesn't work. Uh, get your kicks on Route 48, ah, shit. Get your kicks on Route 117, nah, that's not even... Get your kicks on Route We'll be back after this word from Compose, that gentle blue pill. Hello? <laughs> Hello there, Stephen. Okay, Hi. that one worked. Okay, take 147. Yeah, We're here. That, that just boom, boom, that, that, was, that was comedy gold. Gold, Jerry, gold, <laughs> solid gold. <laughs> I feel like pyrites sometimes in the quarry of life. Yes. How are you, Stephen Pearl? Good. How are you, Alex Landon? How's everything on the East Type Coast? Well, it's a little overcast today, and it is, uh, let's see here, it, it, it's a, we're supposed to get some thunderstorms, and it's been hot as hell. It just constantly is, what the fuck? Okay, hold on a second. Skype just peed on us, is what happened, folks. We'll call him right Somebody's now. Somebody's going to die. Hello, yeah, what happened? Yeah, I don't know. You know, Skype, I paid my bill. I, <laughs> you got to pay that gravity bill. So it'll start floating away. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, with, with the genius of editing, I'm sure we'll have no problem no, with it. No, just, I just let it happen and we broadcast it, happen, it anyway. Like it, 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 it makes it more honest. Yeah, it makes it. Of course. And plus, I'm lazy and who wants to go back and cut the fucking thing? Who right? wants to do that shit? Who needs the heartbreak? Yeah, you know me, Mr. Lazy. Yeah. I've never had yeah, me too. Never want to work too hard. That's why I went no, to radio. No. You know, that's I don't want to work at all. I'm working hard at becoming an invertebrate. Well, that's why you became a comic, is you don't want to work. Who wants to work? Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, I got to work for 45 minutes tonight. Oh God, what am I gonna do? Yeah, yeah. I got to talk for 45 minutes. This job sucks. Did you ever feel that with comedy you were working? Uh the traveling felt like working sometimes when I did the road. Uh, doing the show itself was fun, you know. I, go, well, I, I felt like I was getting paid to get to the gig, not do the gig. Yeah. Getting to the gig could be a pain in the ass, especially if it took American Airlines. But because uh, they usually miss the gig. Well, but uh, other from that, uh, yeah, no, the, the traveling could be a pain in the ass, but the gig itself is usually fun. But I often said that uh, you know that uh, people were really mistaken if they felt they had to pay me to do this. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah, that that I would have done it for free, but I'm not going to tell them that. Exactly. Oh, well, I, I did it for free a lot at the begin at the beginning, and uh, sometimes I still do it for free when I feel like it. And there's although a room I, nearby, I did do that, and that's how I got my job at Sirius XM. I kept bugging, them, I kept bugging them for a show, and they said, "Gee, we don't have it in the budget. We don't have it in the budget. We're trying to get it in the budget." I would call them every month. I no, still got budget problems here. Finally, I said, "Have lunch with me," and they said, "Okay." I said, "Now," I said, "Here's the proposal." Give me a show, I'll do it for nothing. There you go. And they said, that sounds like <laughs> a good deal. And they, an they, offer you couldn't refuse. they brought me on board, and uh -huh. I was working literally for nothing. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. And within about three months, uh, the head of programming came to me and said, this is unacceptable. You're too good. you got to get paid. We're going to give you yes. some... 
And I, he asked me how much money I wanted, and they gave me $25,000 a year more. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Excellent. You should always be paid. You're a master at this. So I, you, I, should be on, you should be on the radio now, man. It's what I'm, now it's horrendous. I can honestly say, honestly say that I would work this business for nothing because I have. Well, you know, yeah. I am now. Yeah, I'm doing this <laughs> thing for nothing. For a couple you of hundred. be on the air every morning, and I would be your Joe Rogelski. I would be your Ed McMahon. Couple, couple of hundred, uh, couple of hundred uh, listeners, and I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be happy with that when I used to have thirty thousand <laughs> a morning. You know. So. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I just show, show business is fleeting. It's a crazy thing. I don't even know why. I, I, I don't even know why I continue to do this. I guess it's just that it gives me something to do every day. You know, <laughs> you do it because you must do it. Otherwise, I quote would, Dean Martin. I would just rot. You know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been, I don't perform as much as I used to, but I still would always like to. So yeah. Yeah. In other words, if, they, if you <laughs> if you had to go somewhere five nights a week and do your act, you'd be happy to do that. Yeah, if, yeah, five nights a week if they pay me. I wouldn't do it five nights a week for nothing, but sure, if it was <laughs> nearby, you know, they pay me, well, sure, I'd be happy to. Yeah. I wouldn't want to live on the road or anything. That's, I'm too old for that crap. But, but I, brought this up, you know, I brought this up to you before. How much do you promote yourself in order to get gigs, or do you just sit there and wait for somebody to call? Well, let's see. Uh, I promote myself, let's see, a point zero 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 minus one. That's how much I promote myself. See, that's, I'm the lazy. I'll go on Facebook. Hey, <laughs> through my tens of fans, I'll be at this place, and nobody gives a crap. So, yeah. And hopefully people show up. Yeah. Now, you know, but there are people who have made their, their careers off of Facebook, you know. Yeah, every, be done. every day they put up a pithy piece of comedy, and, you know, uh, yeah. eventually... Uh, they get like tens of thousands of uh, of uh, fans or whatever, and they're off to the races. Who was that? Who was that horrible comedian? He had a short-lived, big history in which he was on everything. He was they even made a movie with him, and he did it all by internet. He did it all by being online. Oh, Dane Cook. Dane, Dane Cook. Cook started yeah. This, yeah, billions yeah. of people. <laughs> he wasn't saying anything, but yeah. Uh, uh, Dane he Cook. He knew how to use the stage. Dane Cook now has a new first name, which is Whatever Happened To. Uh, <laughs> Fine name. A lot of people have it now. Really? I mean, whatever happened to Dane Cook? Is he around? Uh, he's probably rolling around in the money he made or something. I don't know. Playing the Laugh Factory and demanding to go on for five hours and uh, who knows what. But, I mean, he, you know, he, he literally made his bones by being on the Internet and then he became yep, such a sensation the that they put him on all the major TV shows and uh -huh. they gave him a movie contract. He made a movie, he made one movie, I can't remember what it was. And then all of a sudden, everybody realized nobody gave a shit about who Dane Cook was. Exactly. They started listening to what he was saying. Hey, let's go, let's go elsewhere. But as you say, for and sure. And a new generation has come up since he, was, he got famous, too. So there's, he's, like, considered an old guy by, like, new, newer comedy fans. Yeah. But, I mean, the fact like is ago, so. that even though he disappeared, probably in the time that he was here, he made a big shitload of money. Oh, sure. I hope he you saved know, it. You know, I was talking to Bubs yesterday about Tom Rhodes. Uh, who actually had a TV series that went uh, 19 episodes or something like that. Uh -huh. Well, now, uh -huh. you know, and then he went He went to Amsterdam, and he became a big hit in Holland uh, for some odd... Uh -huh. odd. <laughs> free hash, free hash. There, there must be something it. about the people in Holland who, oh, he's very funny, or whatever their yeah, accent it's is. really good. Well, I'm, I'm, than the I'm doing an Iranian accent for a Dutch I don't know, person. yeah, well, no one said we were dialect masters. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, but no, so, uh, but, and he was not a bad comic, by the way, Tom Rhodes. Uh, oh, yeah, I like Tom. He's a very nice he, guy. He does the job. Yeah. Nice guy, does the job, is is yeah. very affable. And I, it was always very nice to me, so I have nothing bad to say nice about him. But, you know, he had that TV show. Well, how much money did he make off of that? Probably enough to take care of him for the rest of his life. If he, wa if he, oh, wanted, to, nice. if he went and wanted to live like you and I. But, he, yeah. you know. But just that brief, uh, and then of course in Amsterdam, I'm sure he was really top. He had a TV series, he had a talk show sure. or something like that, and I'm sure he did, he got paid a decent money for that. So even though he, some of my people might go, whatever happened to Tom Rhodes? Tom Rhodes probably in okay shape. 
you know. Well, no, he, every time I see him, he's working somewhere. And I think he was at the Frogmorton last week in, uh, here in Mill Valley, so he's always working. Yeah. He's uh, uh, you know, just one of those road warrior guys who's always somewhere. Well, I mean, here's a guy who's had, let's say, larger success than playing the Throckmorton Theater. Oh, sure. Who said to himself, well, you know, things don't stay on top all the time, so I'm back on the road again because that's where I want to be. That's, I, I love yeah, comedy. Yeah, some people... Exactly. If you know, if you're getting decent dough and you're coming, you know, the tour ends with you coming home with a few shekels in your pocket. There's nothing wrong with being on the road all the time. It's a living, and it beats beats yeah. going to Long Island City and working at the Silver Cup Factory. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But well, the Silver Cup work. Factory is now one of the biggest television studios in, the, in New York. By the way, in case you know. oh man, things have changed. That's, I remember that, where they made no, bread there. They used to <laughs> shoot crappy no, white bread. They shot The Sopranos there. That was their oh, did they had silver cup? It turned silver, out. It turned out that this studio. bread company, this bread factory, was huge. Okay, in size yeah. and massive enough to build big sound stages. And now it's yeah. the Silver Cup Studios. It's called. Damn. At least yeah. They kept the name. They didn't have to change the sign. <laughs> they did not change the sign. The sign Silver Cup is still there. As you, you know, yeah. uh, go into. I guess it's what is it? Queens. I guess. Queens, Long Island City. I used to work in a factory three blocks from there back in the seventies. Yep, pulling so, down eighty-eight bucks a week. So don't put down Silver Cup. They're the big, they're big deal, you know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so I mean, uh, you know, a, a, a short-lived career sometimes can be very successful, you know. But sure. oh, what I was going to say was, do you know who would be working the Throckmorton if he wasn't anything anymore? Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld. He loves being. Oh, really? He loves being a stand-up. He hated. Being, oh yeah, he's always he's always doing stuff like little clubs in New York. He still shows up at and does that. Yeah, he you, loves it. You know, he hated doing the series. You know, he. Uh, it's not really? That, well, uh, he, he didn't hate. A lot of money doing it. He didn't hate it because the money was rolling in. That's the part he liked. But it, he didn't like the fact that that was preoccupying his time so much that he couldn't do the stand-up. Because yeah, he really, he, he really is a true stand-up. I mean, if you watch yeah, him doing this comedians was. in a cars getting coffee show that he does, uh -huh. he really just waxes poetic about comedy. How much he loves uh -huh. it, you know, and you can feel it in him. And he, the reason he did this show about comedians in cars getting coffee is because he does what most comedians will do when they're together, and that's riff off each other. That makes Yep. You know, that's, that's what we all did, except back then it was comedians at the Cresco Mansion doing coke. But well, uh, well, other no, than that, it, it, well, well, no, but what I'm saying is that most comedians, you get a couple of comedians together, and what they start doing is riffing with each other. That's what they do. That's what we do. You know, it's like almost like they look upon each other as being in the gym together and being gym partners, you know? Yeah. Uh, and 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 so that's why why I think he wound up doing the show he's doing now because it allows him to be a comedian, and at the same time, deal with other comedians and do do the riffing, you know. Yep. And he loves it when another comic is funny, you know. So yeah, uh, you know, there's that, that 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 respect. But whatever happened to Dane Cook? I I have no idea. I, I couldn't even remember the name. You did. I think. It'll be going on at the Laugh Factory tonight at eight, and going off stage at two thirty in the morning. Dane, if you're, I don't know if, what, if you're I don't listening, I, I don't care. I never, uh, Dane, if you're listening, I would have never wanted you on any of my other radio programs because I considered you a, a comedic hack. But <laughs> if you're out there, I'm doing a podcast now. I'd be happy to have you on. Yeah, no, you, come you on, know. please, please I've, come on. I've got Anything. like I've got like twenty listeners, and uh, I'm happy to have Dane Cook on the show. And I won't even ask whatever happened to you. We'll yeah. book you on after Yahoo Serious and Harvey Weinstein. People Yahoo are begging to come on. Yahoo Serious. <laughs> Remember him? Vaguely, remind me. He was an Australian comedian, and they were pushing him as the new big thing. And he did a movie called Young Einstein that went nowhere. And that was the end of Yahoo Serious. That's right. I, Yahoo. I think he had silly hair or something. This was year, yeah. 20 some years ago, maybe more. Yahoo Serious. Yeah. Yahoo Serious. Remember I, that? I, Came and went. After he, this is over, a baby I'm, I'm going to look up Yahoo Serious and see what the hell ever happened to Yahoo <laughs> Serious. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a welder in Perth, mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Who I, knows? I, 
And then the Russian comic, there was that Russian comic, uh, 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 you oh, know. Amer Yakov, Yakov Smirnov. Yakov Smirnov, but he went well, he, in, in Branson, started the Yakov he's smart. Smirnov. Yeah, he has his own theater in Branson. He's like, he does two shows a day, and I think he's home for dinner. He, and he's raking in the dough, so good for him. Well, he's home for dinner because all the people who go to Branson are in bed by the time he gets home exactly. for dinner. Of course, they're like 95 years old, but everybody is maybe wrinkled like they are, but it's green, too. And and as an older person, let me tell you, that's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> I mean... Uh, I know that feel. Uh, well, you know, I guess if you play that that um, old people circuit down in Miami and stuff, going to the old folks homes and stuff, I guess you got to do your show around six o'clock at night. Oh, sure. There's comedians making livings doing like assisted living facilities and stuff. Because so, they've yeah. all, I wouldn't uh, want to do that circuit, but they've all got come back from Wolfie's from having the uh, early bird. <laughs> you know, yep, the early bird special, and there's like a five fifteen show. Yeah, and right. Five yeah. eighteen because. We get tired. The dinner show at Wolfie's is at 5.15. 5.15 yeah. to 5.18. Uh -huh. And uh, uh -huh. for you who like to party late, there's a late show at 5.19 to 5.25. Gets a little blue. Yeah, boy. Uh, what a sin. What a drag it is getting older. You know, I, it's, well, interesting. Yeah, sir. it's interesting. The Rolling sure. Stones wrote that line when they were like 25 or 20 or something. Yep. And, yep, and, such and time be going on. It is more appropriate today to me at my age than it was when I first heard it. What a oh, drag sure, sure. it is getting older. It's something. Oh, to today is the 50th anniversary of the first rock and or roll type concert I ever saw. 50 friggin' wait, years, wait, wait, half the, a century the, ago. The first, Holy crap. first rock and roll concert you ever saw. Yeah. Now, let me think. August what 2nd, year? What, what? 1968. It was let a me, Friday let night. Think, let me think of who it could have possibly been in '68. Yakov Shmirnov. No. Uh, <laughs> exactly. It was his 60th year in show business. Yah Yahoo Serious. Uh, let me see. Yahoo Serious with Fabian. <laughs> now, who was your first concert? Well, the opening act was a little band called Kangaroo. Uh, forgettable. Had the chick singer with the mini skirt and the long straight hair. Yeah. The middle act was a uh, kind of getting known in this country at the time band from England called The Who. And the headliners are a band from L.A. called The Doors. And I was corrupted for good after that. <laughs> and then yeah. there was a riot. That, 50, that's years a, ago, 50 years ago today. That's a great way to pop your concert cherry, man. Oh, it was a great cherry. My father didn't want me to go because I heard about that Morrison guy. Oh, that's why I want to go. I want to see what happens. And he was waiting outside for me and my friend Johnny Roberts who went with me. And expecting the worst, and of course there was a riot <laughs> during after they played the end, and we walked through the riot unscathed. And my father threw us into the car, vowing he wouldn't let me out of the house again until I was 36. But uh, it was a great show, man. It was a kick-ass show. Morrison was in good shape. The Who kicked ass and smashed all their instruments, and uh, Kangaroo wasn't bad either. Who? I heard Scott Judy was the MC, and I was 12 at the time. I was quite impressionable. Who, who I'm was 19 uh, Scott, now, but, Scott uh, Muni was the MC. Yep. Uh, yeah, Scott Muni, yeah. Right. We got yeah. some great music for I remember he said, a lot of you people have heard the doors on WMCA, and the crowd went, boo, boo. And I know you've heard the doors on 77 WABC, boo, boo. <laughs> and I know you've heard them on WNEWFM, and the crowd went, yeah. <laughs> and he brought the doors on. And I, oh, it was fun, man. I think my ears came twice. Yeah, I. What was the first concert I ever went to? I think it was uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders. Rudy Valley. No, it was, Paul, Revere it was Paul Revere and the Raiders, but not the musical group. The original Paul Revere and the, the Raiders. The original Paul Revere. <laughs> that song "The British Are Coming" was no. My first. Was, my first. Only at night. My first concert. I'm gonna have to say this because I, you know, it is not indelible in my mind. But then again, what you saw was so wonderful. But, oh, it was insane, you know, man. But I think the first concert, actual concert I ever went to was Elvis Presley. In now, San was this in the 50s or the 60s? In, or which in, Elvis in, was in it? San Francisco in the, in the, in the 50s. Wow, and, and, okay. And I cool. think I think it was at the, uh, what what's that place in the, the Civic Hard Center? The, the place in the Civic Center. Uh the, uh, the Cow Palace, uh, no, no, the no, no, Bull no. Room. The, uh, it was, uh, you know, the, the big auditorium. That's, was, there's only one room. Huh? The fucking room. This the is, fucking room. You saw a big room. There's only one. There's only one. 
uh, 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 auditorium in the Civic Center. I'm trying to remember the name. Civic Center, okay. That had it. I don't know. And I think they, they changed the name. There. I think they changed the name to the Moscone Auditorium or something like that. But, yeah. Uh, they used to do all the very big events there, and uh, but I think that's where I saw Elvis Presley. Uh, oh, cool! And, but it's very vague, yeah. you know, because there was so much screaming going on, you couldn't hear him, you know. Yeah, yeah. I have a pretty vague. I have pretty, I have a pretty vivid memory of the Door Show. I remember it was a Friday. I remember the very next night, my parents took me to see The Producers, which is still one of my favorite comedy movies. So it was quite a busy weekend. <laughs> well, the thing a is, the thing weekend. is that with Elvis Presley, I mean, I should be saying to you, well, I got you beat with The Doors. I got Elvis Presley was my first, but I would yep, rather I would rather The Doors would have been my first for a couple of reasons. Number one, they were more interesting, uh, and uh, secondly, I would be younger then. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> Before we all, you know, but uh, so it was 1968 for you then. Yeah, 50 yeah. years ago at the night, and uh, saw the Doors and the Who and the Kangaroo at the old Singer Bowl. I don't even know that place exists anymore. I, I but, remember uh, you, you, here in New York, you could go to the Fillmore Auditorium, and the bills. Oh, Fillmore was the, great. The bills you would see. I mean, I think I went to one once where the Who was the second act. Yep. You know. Sure. Uh, and I can't remember who the who, uh, who the first one was. Where did you see the Doors, and the Who, and whatever that other group was? Where did you see it? The, the, the Singer Bowl on the Old World's Fairgrounds. I don't know if it's still there yeah. or if it's rotting. Because that almost <laughs> you know, sounds like a bill. That almost sounds, mini stadium. That almost sounds like a, that almost sounds like a bill would have been at the Fillmore Auditorium. You know. Well, the door. I know the Doors played there and the Who played there on different occasions, but no, it was just a. Uh, it was just there. I was lucky enough to go. So <laughs> I, think, I, just, I remember. I, see, I, I remember seeing the Who as a middle act, and they might have been the Doors that opened for them. But I can't remember that. No, that uh, were the the uh, main uh, act. But yeah, when I saw them, it was a year before Tommy came out, and the year before they played Woodstock, which really made the Who superstars, and they were getting known. But uh, they were on the they were the middle act that night. They did a kick ass half hour set, smashed everything up. Then they cleaned up the mess, and old Jim came out with the boys, and uh, they, they were very hypnotic. They didn't get. You, you would have thought that they were bigger by then because uh, hadn't they already done Monterey? Yeah, Monterey was the year before, yeah. and uh, I think the movie came out that year in '68, the next year. Just, so uh, I don't, I don't know what their their status was. They were getting known in this country. They were huge in England, but uh, they weren't quite the biggest headliners yet. But you know, they were on their way. I'll tell you, they did uh, after Tommy. I mean, Tom, Tommy was an interesting you sure. know, work, uh, but they kept doing good stuff for quite a while after that. You know. Oh, I love the Keith Mooney or who. It was yeah, they, they, they did. Uh, it was very uh, exciting to watch, and it was like it was, <laughs> they were like this cartoon that could really play. There's always something going on stage. I, I think Who's Next is my favorite album of theirs. Oh yeah, that was that yeah. was very progressive. Yeah. But uh, uh, Tommy, I, I, I mentioned this before, not to you, but to the audience. I have in my storage locker uh, two test pressings of Tommy by The Who. Yikes. And it's got a mimeograph sheet of all the music because it has a blank label on it, right? Wow. And, oh, it's, cool. it, and it says on the mimeograph sheet, Tommy and Opera. Right, and then That's it. somebody I think wrote in with a carrot there uh, above it, rock. Rock. So, That's what'll so, sell. So An opera it, won't it, sell it, to these kids. Yeah, so, put a rock opera. So originally they were doing it as an opera. You know, they yeah. called it an opera. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that that was that was that was pretty good. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure, uh, sure. But, but they, was, uh, I, I, I some people it. say it rock and roll peaked from '69 to '71. My favorite, my favorite group of that time, though, and they don't, they haven't had the lasting ability of the Who or a lot of others. To <clears> me, <throat> were the Kinks. I thought they. Yeah, were, I was never a huge fan of them. They were good, but they just never. I did it thought for they me. were great. I thought they were great. Um, uh, you know, uh, I I really enjoyed their music. But I, I, but I love the Who too. The Who were one of my favorites. Uh, 
Oh, sure, sure. So I'm going to keep this in the band. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just, you know, I, I, what's going to happen tonight is going to be quite explosive. We only have a couple of moments left here, but let me point out that if you take a Who record and listen to it today, the technical quality of those recordings is pristine. Uh -huh. I mean, what they recorded back in that time isn't like lacks any kind of uh, highs and lows in it. It it, it is, That's right. and it is as pristine today. If I if I release that in one of their albums today and said this is a new album by the Who, you'd believe it because it yeah. had all the all the uh, technical quality of a. Of a present day album, really, really, they that's why yep. they that's why they lasted so long. Sure, maximum yeah. R and B, mate, maximum R and B. That's right. Hey, look. There you go. You know, I'm looking at the clock, and uh -oh. it's wending down here. Winding, winding down. down. Oh, Lord. It says we have another 20 seconds for me to say goodbye uh -oh. to America's fastest rising young comedian. Yes, it's very good. I'm going to be on a young 62-year-old comedian special, but we better film them for all of November because then I'll be 63. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much. Time for my chair talk. Thank you very much. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gadnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And here we are. Oh, wait, I better turn on the on the air sign. Otherwise, it isn't official. At least that's what my wife says. She bought me this thing, this sign back here. Hey, and I have a little uh, I have a little remote control doohickey that uh, uh, that I use to uh, click it on and off. You okay. think? Well, uh, there we go. Okay. I guess it wasn't pointed in the general direction of the remote control. Let me go get the uh, Skype going here for as long as it still keeps going. Uh, it's been giving, uh, it's been giving uh, 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 Jack Bishop uh, some problems for the last couple of nights. Uh, it could be that uh, Skype is trying to fuck things up for everybody so that they will up, uh, get up to their new, their new Skype or whatever. Anyway, our, uh, our Skype line is open, so that means you can call us, and we would love to hear from you. Um, and uh, you do that by, well, go over to gabnet.net, and uh, over on the right-hand side of the page is a whole tutorial on how to, how to call this program, how to use Skype, how to get Skype, uh, how to shove Skype up your ass, how to make it blow you. Uh, all those things, and uh, uh, you, you can actually come join us. Uh, all you have to do is there's even a thing there where you can click on it, and if you've got Skype open, it will it will dial us. Okay, or dial us. I mean, that's how old I am. Nobody dials anybody anymore. What do they do? What? How do we replace the term dial? What do we replace it with? Uh, just anyway, click. Uh, go over there and look at it if you don't know how to do it. Also, there's a phone number there. You can call us, and uh, you won't be able to see anybody, and we won't be able to see you, and it's not as much fun, but still, you know, we can live with it. Okay, that's why I have the phone number. I pay, uh, what is it, $3 a month for that phone number from Skype? So come on, you better use it. Uh, some people do use it. We have quite a few people who on a regular basis use it. So. Anyway, so I'm sitting here waiting for calls. That's what I'm um, kind of belly aching about. Now, uh, Phil uh, wrote me a note and said he's uh, very tired tonight. He's exhausted or something, and he's just going to go to sleep early or whatever, uh, which worries me because, you know, he hasn't been well. And uh, I just hope it's nothing associated with that, that he's just truly tired. Uh, I, You know, it's funny. I worry about my callers well if i don't hear from somebody like for a couple of weeks i will write them a note and say is everything okay are you all right uh so i do care and i i do care about phil in spite of the fact that he drives me crazy sometimes but last night was a phil free night and i always get the feeling that oh, it's gonna be a phil free night and then nobody's gonna call it's gonna be nothing well, as it turned out last night, we had a full house for the first time in a couple of weeks. That means nine people plus me we call a full house. 
10 is a uh, plus me is a royal flush uh, and uh, 11 is we can't fit another one in that's really what it amounts to uh, but uh, so I'm I'm worried again tonight that because Phil isn't going to call and start the whole thing off with me that there's not going to be any callers and so I'm sitting here uh, just uh, kind of waiting for people uh, to call um, there's nothing new to report here except that you know uh, as as always I am uh, anticipating this change in Skype coming September 1st. Now by September 1st, the version of Skype I'm using, which you, you know, I, I can show you here. There it is, see? Uh, it, it, notice what it says. This version of Skype will be discontinued soon to continue using Skype in the future. Update to the latest version today. Well, I mean, I could update to it, but it looks shitty on my show. Uh, it only puts four people on the screen at a time with a bunch of balloons uh, saying what, what else is uh, uh, going on, who else is calling. And if you get over like two other people, I understand that there's a balloon that says like how many people are, are in that balloon. And uh, it, it, it's just ridiculous. And it means that I'm going to have to move people up and down and into the picture and you know, I really don't know if I'm going to continue this after the, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, another problem that I have with it is that I use a thing here called OBS, which is a studio, and it does all the switching. It does this stuff, you know, so I can do that, all right? And um, um, I, I, it, it uh, you know, it works really well. It's a great little, little system. It's free, too, on top of everything else. But when I try it with the newest version of Skype, because I have both of them loaded into this computer, it doesn't, you can't get the Skype, uh, I could not get that. It would just be blank, okay? Uh, however, if I go over and use my Mac and use OBS over there, I can do it. So come the first, I, I, unless uh, somebody at OBS changes things up so that we can use it or another company does it so we can use it, uh, it's going to be um, pretty terrible. Uh, I'm going to have to do it on the, on the Mac, which is fine, but uh, just it, it doesn't look as good. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I, for some reason, you know, Microsoft, who owns uh, Skype, uh, makes it so it works best on Microsoft products, okay? So anyway, that, that, the only way I'll be able to do the show is by doing it on the Mac, which is this machine over here, and then you will get a whole different picture of me in the background and everything. But that, uh, so I'm, I'm dealing with that. I'm also dealing with the fact that I'm sitting here saying a whole bunch of stuff and nobody's calling. So, you know, uh, I... Uh, I just, you know, I just, I just want to hear from you. I, we've got like a, a lot of people listening, so people are waiting to see you. We had a lot of people last night. We had probably the largest amount of viewership at any one time that we've had, I think ever. I'm not sure, but I think ever. So uh, uh, now I need some callers so that uh, 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 the the what. The, the uh, people who are watching will have somebody to watch. Uh, and I don't know who's out there or who's going to call, but if I don't hear, I, I always say this threat and then I never have to live up to it. But if I don't hear from people within, oh, if I don't hear from somebody, boy, it's getting hot in here. I may have to take this shirt off. Uh, in, in, oh, say six minutes from right now, uh, I'll have to... Uh, I'll call, I'll, sh I'll call the show off. I'll just go. Yeah, I, oh, well, see? As soon as I say that, here comes Ray Renati, ladies and gentlemen. Ray yeah, Renati, who is, uh, you're walk where are you walking, Ray? Back I'm in the house right now. You're in the house? Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you getting ready to go for your walk? Yeah, I was going to take the dog for a walk. 
But yeah. I, I just heard you say that no one was calling, and I just thought I'd call and well, it, you say know, hello. Well, it, it means that I can, I can say something, you know. Yeah. By the way. I had the same problem with Skype today. I was doing two interviews on my podcast, and I usually do it on my, uh, on my PC, and I had downloaded the latest version of Skype. Mm -hmm. I figured I might as well get on the, and I can't use this Pamela software I used to use, and I couldn't use OBS, and. I had to go over to the Mac and do it, and I found another program that worked still. What 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 program is that? Uh, it's called. I'll, I'll I can't remember. I'll send it to you. I, I can't remember it, right it, now. The one that worked. Uh, it, it worked well, on and the, it did two tracks too. On the PC, mm -hmm. you mean? No, on the Mac. It worked on the Mac really well. well oh, uh, OS uh, OBS works well on uh, on. Oh. OBS okay, I didn't works try that. on the Mac too. You can oh, okay. get you can get the video. You don't need video though for your show, do you? No, no. You just need audio. What yeah. you weren't able but to get. I found this other one that does video and audio really easily and really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and maybe it works with OBS. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, uh, so anyway, we. Were, I guess a lot of these people are going to have to figure these problems out before the the time hits. But uh, you know, I well, just I just hate I just hate Microsoft. I just. Oh, I know. It just pisses me off. I read something today where they're supposed to be introducing a creator's studio or something for Skype where you can just do it right through Skype. Well, no, I read that, and they supposedly did it, oh. and uh, it's not out. It's not there. No, I know. It's not there. It, yeah. it says you go to call, and then you go in, in, in uh, what is it, uh, enable NDI or something, and then you use this NDI program, and that will allow you to run the, the video. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's not in there. Yeah, I know. I couldn't find it either. Yeah, it's nowhere to be found. It, I, uh, undoubtedly, that was like in something they released two months ago, but they decided to take it out now. Yeah, yeah. it probably wasn't working right. Yeah, but the idea was that, that Skype would have this special kind of Skype for creators like you and I, right? Yeah. Who need right. to use it, and also to record it to uh, run it through uh, various video programs and so on and so forth and um, no, it's not that it, it's not there it's just it, the it said go over there and I read all the information go to call and it showed the guys uh, set up and it, then it yeah. said uh, uh, use NDI and he clicked that on well I went to call on both my Mac and my PC, and it didn't happen with either. Yeah, I did the same exact thing today. Yeah. I was so, so pissed because I saw the video, and, and when I went to go do what he did, the choice wasn't there. Yeah, so, you know, and Microsoft, again, are a bunch of lion sacks of shit. Somewhere along the line between the time the guy recorded that and now, they did away with that ability. Yeah. You there know? was some version in between where they had it and then an update where they got rid of it. Yeah. What I we see, I mean, he, what a lot of people do when they come out with something new is they say, "Hey, do you want to use the new one or do you want to use classic?" You know? Yeah. Right. Uh, and actually, what they do is they have a they 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 run it all from within the same program. But you know, no such luck with uh, Apple and with uh, with uh, Skype in this particular case. So. No. You know. Microsoft is such a disorganized company. And I think they're just, there's such a large elephant, you know, it's like they have the, the operating system yeah. and the server systems and, and that's their bread and butter. And then everything else is just a bunch of junk. How is it they have all that shit, but it's Apple that's worth $1 trillion? I think it's because Apple never, you know, it's opened up to, to all these other manufacturers. Yeah, but why, why? I mean, if you got Apple... Uh, yeah. Owning well, the PC market. Every PC in the world, which makes up about ninety percent of all computers in the world, have Windows operating in it. So right. every one of those computer manufacturers paid Windows, it paid Microsoft to use Windows in their machines. Yeah. Okay. And then in each of those machines, they add like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Microsoft Office. They sell Microsoft Office, and that's the right. leading program of that sort. Yeah. So with all that going for them, why is it that Apple is the $1 trillion company? In case people don't know today, Apple 
surpassed one trillion dollars in net worth. Oh, I see. On the What's stock. Microsoft worth? About three dollars and seventy-five cents. I don't know. It's not worth that. Uh, I'll, I can I can look it up. I but, didn't know that they went let, let down me, that much. Let me see here. Um, Microsoft uh, stock. Let's say that. See what comes up. Ba -ba -bam, ba -ba -bam. Uh, it's trading at one hundred and seven dollars and fifty seven cents. And it's uh, let's see here. What's its net worth? I don't see it here. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't. I, I'm trying to find its net worth here. Um, oh, here we well, let's see here. No, market cap. They're, yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, they're at uh, 824.9 billion dollars. And what was Apple? One trillion. Okay, so Microsoft's a couple hundred million behind. Yeah. So, but they're not that far behind. Yeah, but still, I mean. Apple was oh, yeah. that little upstart company, and and uh, you know, let's see and here. And they almost went out of business a bunch of times, and now and now they've surpassed yeah. them. Right here, look at it. The market cap for Apple says right there, one point zero zero T. We've wow. never we've never seen wow. that in the stock market before. Amazing. Well, yeah. this is the iPhone, you what? know, and um, I think the iPhone was a huge a huge boom for them. Uh, yeah. Microsoft's phone was a joke. Um, uh, Mic Microsoft? Did Microsoft have a phone? I think they did for a while, didn't they? No. Yeah. They, well, no, they had. No, they would just have their operating system. They had an yeah. operating system for the phones, but nobody used it. Nobody had the. Yeah, nobody used but it. Google and came out with Android, so Android yeah. was 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 sold to all these companies that. Uh, well, to begin with. Apple's operating system doesn't get sold to anybody, right? So, uh, they if they wanted to make uh, make phones, uh, certain companies, but they didn't want to team up with Apple. To well, they couldn't get their OS, so they had to have some kind of operating system, and and uh, Google came up with that uh, that answer. And let's see yeah. what's what's Google worth today. I think uh, you know who came close today to hitting the the trillion. Uh, believe it or not, was Amazon. They were oh, yeah, like they're... racing to the finish on it. Amazon's market cap, oh no, it's at 884 uh, million, tri uh, billion, uh, billion, I think. Yeah, I guess that's the way it goes. And well, I have a friend who used to work at Microsoft, and she said it's just chaos over there. <laughs> Nobody talks to each other, and you can see it in the products. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Yahoo. Uh, I, I don't have it. Oh, here, but Yahoo's going down. Yeah, Yahoo's not uh, doing that well. But Google. I wanted to look up Google. That's what I wanted to look up. Oh, anyway, oh, they're doing. So I'm sure they're doing great. So nobody's calling us tonight. This, yeah, what's going this on? This is the night I, all, I always feared. You know. <laughs> I don't, maybe everybody upgraded their Skype. It could be. Well, I know we're going out. We, I know the video's going out. I know the yeah. phones were. The Skype is working because you called. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. I. You know, Mike. Whatever happened to Microsoft? I remember studying in economics that when, whenever you have a, a a a company that's sort of dominating the market, they get cash. They become like a cash cow, and they get lazy, and and this is what happens. They just they just become super inefficient, and they have no reason to to be efficient, make new products, be innovative, be organized. Well, I think there's something else too to be said for it. I think when when Gates left, mm -hmm. uh, it started going down, and and yeah. the reason it started going down, it isn't that. You'd like to think no one person can hold a company together, but one person who started the company has enough sweat equity in the place that they're, every moment they're there, they make sure it's working and it's yep. moving ahead. Like I feel, in spite of their trillion dollars today, 
that Apple is not nearly the company it was when Jobs was alive. And yeah. once he died, even though you had uh, you know people there who just loved Apple and wanted to see it succeed and all of that, they didn't have that same sweat equity that Jobs had in it, and the same passion. Yeah. I mean, it it was his baby. Yeah. It's not what's the who's the president now of Apple? It's not he's it's not his I baby. Don't even know. You know, he inherited yeah. the child. You know. He adopted the child. So when those when, when you lose that, you lose, I mean, who knows where Apple would be now, what kind of innovations they would have if Jobs were still alive. Meanwhile, yeah. all we're getting are redos and upgrades of the iPhone, redos and yeah. upgrades of the iPad. You yeah. know, uh, nothing, nothing, new. nothing really new. And, uh, um, oh, God, I forgot. Oh, you know, the couple of times that, Jobs went away from Apple. They they got into big trouble. Well, they brought they, him back each well, time. Well, when they fired him. Yeah. Way back when. Yeah. And, and when they fired yeah. him, uh, they um, um, th they went into the toilet. Uh, I remember. I remember those machines they were making. They were just. They were shit. Oh yeah, the, you know they were absolute shit. And the then power PC. They finally yeah. brought Jobs back in. He didn't come in initially as being a CEO or anything like that. He came back in as a consultant in a consultant yeah. position. And then and, he was interim CEO for a long time yeah, or something. Like yeah. That. And uh, the fact was that that uh, he, he the idea that saved Apple, without question, wasn't another computer. They, they were iPad. always they were they, no iPod. Oh. oh, the iPod, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean the iPod changed the whole you know the whole uh, dynamic. Yeah. Of what was happening. You yeah, know. everyone had an iPod. Y yeah. <laughs> and and that saved Apple. Yeah. And then yeah. of course uh, the iPod gave way to the iPhone, and right. the iPhone actually kind of became the iPod. I mean, I use my iPhone as my iPod now. Yeah, me too. You don't really need an iPod anymore unless you're like an aerobics instructor or something. You don't want phone calls while you're you're playing your music over the loudspeaker. Oh, well, look who's calling. <laughs> look who's calling. Of course, this doesn't mean the show gets any better. Tony Magno, ladies and gentlemen, is calling. Uh Hello, Tony. Thank you for calling on what is a pathetic show tonight. Uh, it's the Ray and Alex show. Uh, I find it interesting, the Apple talk. So I says, I have to call off. I always find it interesting, the technology. People love the technology stuff. Yeah. I do. I mean, and Alex, you know what I remember, too? I never owned Apple, but I remember when Jobs first, one of the times he left, did he buy some kind of operating system next he called named it no no next. he didn't he didn't buy it he actually bought he, he left apple and with some of the money that he had he started a company called next i remember that and, uh, and i remember those I, were some great computers they were they were incredible computers i remember we had one at live 105 in san francisco oh, yeah. i remember reading on that i never had a mac at the time and i was always wanting one because mm -hmm. i was more of a gates guy and i but you were right. Jobs seemed like he would, he really was truly a visionary. Where he mm -hmm. probably didn't have he he saw what people needed, yeah. and then he knew how to get it done with the with the other guy. Part part so, of the problem with part of the problem with Next was it was an incredibly expensive machine. It was just you know it wasn't meant for you and me. I, okay. I think they started at something like. Do you remember? Do you remember how expensive I they were? Like in the computer uh, Ray, they were like I, eight. If I remember correctly, they were somewhere between six and eight grand. Yeah, yeah. just for just yeah. the basic. Yeah, and they're the, beautiful machines too. It, it, they're just really nice looking machines. But he he kind of closed down next and went back to Apple. And what he did when he went to Apple is he took all the tech that they had created at Next. And applied it to the apples, you know. So yeah. uh, he 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 took his tech with him, uh, and um, you know, uh, and well, that was a hell of a machine. But it was too expensive. Yeah. Nobody, no, not the average person wasn't going to buy one. And and you want to laugh? I was going to tell you this. Oh, oh wait a minute! I got to tell you one other thing. One other thing. One other thing. Oh yeah, yeah. The next had a plasma screen. 
Up until then, all screens were black and white, right? And this was yeah. plasma, and it wasn't color, but it was. I think it was a red, red coloring on the lettering and stuff. Yeah, it, yeah and it was a very, very well-defined screen. So, yeah, yeah, the best it. graphics I think you could get at the time. Yeah, if I remember right. Which were yeah. shit, but, but uh, the best you could get at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. you wonder though. Didn't he have something to do with B B computer or something like that? To do? That I don't know. Not that I know I mean, of. Next, I followed that for a while. Oh, I thought then he, he went to Pixar after that, Alex, or before? No, he started Pixar. When did he start Pixar? I'm trying to remember. Was it after he's... Next or no? I wasn't sure. I was used to following I him. think it was when he went back to Apple. I think he invested in Pixar. Or he made, I think he invested in Pixar while he wasn't at Apple. I mean, this guy Lassiter came to him and said, I, I got an idea to do computerized. Um, what he had was a program. And, uh -huh. and the program was called um, uh, Pixel. I think. I mean, it yeah, and and um, uh, it, it, he could do animations with it, and so Jobs said, "Good deal. I'll invest in this." He's smart. He saw it right yeah. away. Alex. He uh, knew when something was good. Wait a minute. Wait, Pixar. Uh, Pixar. No, uh, yeah. no. Pixar is the name of the company. What was the name? Yeah. Render Man. That was the name of it. Oh, Render I didn't Man. Know that. And. Me but I, I'm trying to remember. I think he bought Render Man was started with money from Lucas, I believe. Wow! And then Jobs bought, pick, and he they started Pixar, and it was owned by by um, um, Lucas. I think I'm right on this. And then uh, Lucas sold it to Jobs. And that's when Jobs put an infusion of money into it, and they started doing all the great animation and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I I, remember, I love every one of those movies they make. I mean, I saw every one. Yeah, of them. Yeah, but did. a lot of a lot of stuff they were doing early. I mean, one of the earliest uh, animations they did was that light uh, light that stand light oh, stand. Oh, the lamp comes out. Yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah they still use that. He was called. Like, it was called, that. and the video was called Luxo. I think was his the name of the of the lamp. And yeah. they just. Uh, I remember when that first came out. Everyone was. I was so amazed. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I remember seeing Toy Story. So I like two or three times in the theater. It's like this thing. Like, it was just so good. To me, it reminded me of like Disney early Disney movies. Well, you know, I was always, I, I was a very big purist about animation, and I went, "Who needs this kind of animation?" You know, who needs computer animation? Oh, I love the old Disney. It, you know, wait a minute. Let me finish. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, Thank you. Uh, uh, um, uh, I, I was, a, you know, a, I loved regular animation. It was a real art. Somebody sat there with a pen and ink and drew pictures and drew enough of them that eventually they moved, right? So I was always a, it was always a big deal for me uh, that, that animation was, it was an artist's ability. And I didn't think that computers could do anything to even come close. And now I think that most of the computerized animation is better than any of the drawn animation that we had in the past. That they do things with it and, and add beauty and luster to it that you could have never done by hand. You know? Uh, and I, I, you know, and they've done character development and everything else yes. with it. So, uh, I, I find that I'm, I'm a big fan now of computer animation. In fact, I don't even think of it as computer animation anymore. I just think of it as animation like I always thought of animation. So, that's me. All right. Here we are. An hour into the show, we got only two Books people. about acting. For, and he goes around the world and he does lectures of teaching animators how to make their characters realistic and have their own personalities and who, who does stories. That? Who, who does His name is Ed Hooks. Really? Yeah. He lives in Portugal now. He's a good friend of mine. He makes his living doing this. And it's because they can do so much with the animation now. They can they can they can make these characters real. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So whereas before they couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. I mean, you look at a movie like Ants, even you know, and 
everybody, all the, all the characters have their own personalities and realistic expressions and reactions. To well, everything. it's interesting. Pixar has always led the, the, the pack. You know, whenever they have a new film come out, it's always got some new little nuance to it that makes people in the industry gasp, okay? But nevertheless, all these other guys have come up behind them using their tech and have done a beautiful job, some of them, you know? Uh, and, you know, so yeah. in fact, for a while there, there were a couple doing a better job than Pixar. Pixar was kind of lagging behind because they didn't have storyline or things like that. But then, most recently, they came out with what I think is one of the most beautiful films they've ever done, Coco, which is just a gorgeous film. That's the name we go to. Yeah, yeah, we know that, Tommy. I'm going to have to see that. What's it called? Co Co Coco. Yeah, that was a good movie. Oh. Yeah, uh, and uh, and they came out with Frozen, but Frozen was di was under the Disney banner. It wasn't a Pixar picture, but Frozen was beautifully done. Yeah, that was a nice movie too. I saw the play. You know, yeah. But all of it, yeah. you know, even though they aren't Pixar pictures, the Disney animation it was led up by held it was headed by John Lasseter, who they brought back, thank God. Um, who who developed just the whole? He started Pixar, so he became the president of Disney Animation. So a lot of this stuff coming out is uh, is uh, Disney Animation, uh, but it's also Pixar. I mean, he but Frozen was out of the Disney arm of the company and was just I think it, easily the best Disney picture ever. Yeah, it was I mean, just was wonderful. Right. But it was, and it was all done with computer animation. So I, I don't think know. I've seen it yet. Yeah. Who did up? Who did the one up? That that was the, Pixar. Got... That was Pixar. That was yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, I love that movie. You know, but I mean, they've, they've done some lovely work. I had a friend who worked over there. He, he says since quit, who worked with them from the very beginning. He was he was with them when they were with uh, when they were with Lucas. You know, uh, and yeah. it all kind of fell under industrial light and magic. And then Lucas, I think, just decided he didn't want to invest. He didn't. He didn't have the time, or or the inkling to really go headlong into this computer animation. And so uh, here comes the job. Says I'll take it off your hands. And he said, Good, cool. And he bought. I I don't know how much he bought it for. But yeah. yeah. So anyway, I've run out of stuff to talk about, and and and, and nobody's calling. You yeah, know? where is everybody tonight? I don't know. This may be it for me. I may just give up after this. But I want to talk about uh -huh. something that will be close to uh, to Ray's heart, because Ray sent me something about uh, the fact that uh, this one uh, psychologist feels that Donald Trump is losing his mind. Yeah, wasn't that a great video? Yeah, I watched some of it. I couldn't watch. I didn't have yeah. time to watch all of it. Would you uh -huh. care to just uh, explain a little bit about what it was about? Well, this was a, gosh, this guy, his, his background had something to do with analyzing people's personalities, and I think he had some kind of job in the government at one time. He's a psychiatrist, and he's, he was able, he is able to look, watch Trump on television mm -hmm. and was able to diagnose him with all sorts of different uh, mental illnesses. Well, um, you know, I though I find that a little off-putting and I'll tell you why. I did too a little bit. I just thought it was really uh, I don't think I don't think that a, a competent psychiatrist would consider uh, psychoanalyzing somebody by television. You know what I'm saying? Well, his argument was, though, that he was able to actually see more of Trump than he was of anybody who actually came to him in his office uh, because he, there were so many hours of footage to watch. Well, but yeah, I but, do understand what you're saying, though. But yeah. still, to not have that person there and to be going yeah. through your, super, uh, your psychoanalytic techniques is a bit, you know, I don't know, it's off-putting. I, I, off but... Do you know who Amarosa is? Amarosa? Yeah. Yeah. Her full name is Amarosa Manigault Newman. And yeah. she was on, uh, among other things, The Apprentice, where that's where she got known, because, and she was kind of like 
what the evil person on the show. She was one of the evil yeah. contestants. And then when Trump went into the White House, he made her a, an assistant uh, to yeah. him. Um, and um, probably the only black person in the, in the White House. Uh, but anyway, and then all of a sudden one day she was she was dumped unceremoniously. All of a sudden she was gone. Well, and there were all these rumors that she went berserk and was yelling and screaming at Trump and everybody. Well, she's ri- she was leaving. She's written a book. She's written a book. Yeah. And uh, this comes out of the Daily Mail. Uh, she says something was seriously was going on in Donald's brain. She tells how President Trump exhibited a mental decline that could not be denied as she watched his rambling Lester Holt interview in her explosive book. Uh, A couple of things she brings up um, uh, in an excerpt from the book exclusively attained by the Daily Mail, the former White House assistant to the president makes a case for mental decline. Hope Hicks had gone over the briefing on discussing Comey's firing with him a dozen times, Omarosa says. Throughout his erratic and contradictory interviews, I kept thinking, oh no, oh no, this is bad, she writes. The book promises to deliver the juiciest insider scoop yet about Trump and the Trump White House. And last week it was reported that Omarosa had been interviewed by federal investigators in the Trump uh, Cohen probe. Now, I have a little bit more that I took off of this. Hold on a second. I've got a... I wish I would make paper so it separates easily. Um, In the exclusive excerpt obtained by the Daily Mail, Omarosa, who first met Trump when she appeared on The Apprentice and later became an assistant to the president, tells of the dread she felt while watching Trump's interview with Lester Holt last May. While watching the interview, I realized that something real and serious was going on in Donald's brain. His mental decline could not be denied. Uh, Many didn't notice it as keenly as I did because I knew him way back when. They thought Trump was just being Trump, off the cuff. But she says that since she knew him back then, she could tell the difference, and there's something definitely wrong with the man. Well, that doctor said something very similar. He said, uh, you know, we'd go back and he watched Trump in some of his older interviews in the 80s and 90s and compare them to his interviews now. And he had a he had a robust vocabulary back then. And he was able to speak in complete sentences without repeating words. And he doesn't seem to be able to do that anymore. Really? Yeah, that was, that was near the end of the interview, if you didn't get that far. but uh, Yeah, I didn't get that far, but... Yeah. Uh, you know, I think there is something wrong with him. Uh, and, and this is something, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure this isn't the first time this has happened in the presidency that we've had some president who went batshit. I mean, Nixon was pretty close to going batshit. Yeah. Uh, when he was, it's supposedly in his last days at the White House, was talking to the paintings of the presidents. Hey, Alex, <laughs> can it be the pressure of the job, maybe, you think? No, I mean, of course there's a pressure to the job, but then again, isn't this Mr. Business? Isn't this the guy who ran multi-billion dollar companies? Unless he's in over his head and he doesn't know what to do. He was in over his head the day he decided to run. Yeah, I mean, you know. And he knew it. I don't think he expected to win. I don't think he wanted to win. Yeah. No, I don't think so I think he wanted what he would get after the fact. He probably wanted a television network. He was going to get a news network. He had Roger Ailes all set up to get it going the day after he lost. Yeah. Okay. And I often liken it to uh, the producers. You know, where do we go wrong? Where do we go right? <laughs> you know, that you do. Look, we'll run a campaign. We'll do everything we can to lose. And then when we lose, we'll take blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden you find out you won and you go, what the fuck do we do now? Yeah, that exactly. Could be like, like, oh, I think that I think, you, I think you're absolutely right, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so it, you know, and as a matter of fact, I always I I said it reminded me of the producers, and then I can't remember who did it, but they did do a parody of the producers, but with Trump. <laughs> uh, about, about no, well, no, it was it was actually I think they used. Uh, 
who did they use? They used the guys that did the Broadway show, which was Nathan Lane and, oh, I like Nathan Matthew, Lane. and Matthew, Broder Broderick. Matthew Broderick. And they, the, the plot goes, what if we get somebody and we have him say all these terrible things and run him for president? And then we'll get all the money that we get out of all that whatever, blah, blah, blah. And the same plot, <laughs> but it's, it's Trump. And where do we go right, you know? <laughs> Did you ever see the second season of uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm when, when Mel Brooks hired Larry David to be the LA stock? Yeah. And, he, and then you find out at the end he did it to try to get the, to, to bring on the demise of the musical, the producers, because he was so tired of having to deal with it on Broadway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic. Well, they did a nice job of, they were, of recreating it. I think they actually went to the Broadway theater and actually, you know, Larry David was doing the show. He was. And they had the, the, the cast, the, whole, the ensemble and everything. Yeah. 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 I like the, uh, which well, he's funny, uh, Larry David. When you watch it, he, I wonder if he's like that in real life, like just kind of laid back. Like I that. heard he is. I mean, uh, he probably has funny stories, like that. Uh, because he said, didn't he, did you say Alex once? He got himself fired. And walked, I mean, it's in an interview from Saturday Night Live. He just got up and walked out and says, "I quit." And then he showed up the next week to work. He said, uh, "Do you think they're taking him seriously?" Yeah, well, I, I, that I, I don't know. I, that. I don't. I, I don't know that he was ever a writer at Saturday Night Live, but he could well have been. A lot of people went through there. You know, I knew people who were on Saturday Night Live as writers and so on, who got out of there pretty quickly because it's a it's a real, real cluster fuck over there. Um, you know, it, it's a matter of playing politics, and everybody's fighting to get their work their. They're writing on the air, and uh, uh, you know the the cast is fighting to get a part on that week's show, and it, it's you know, so it's you a, wonder if it's a lot of you. You're probably right. It's probably like a big tug of war for everything. Like they have to like you probably to put something on. Yeah, there. but uh, anyway, well nobody else. Well, John, when John Cleese, uh, oh, it's too noisy here. No, it's not too noisy. Okay. When John Cleese uh, was asked about what it was like to host Saturday Night Live, he, that's what he said. Because when on the Monty Python set, they, they would get there at 8 o'clock Monday morning and work their asses off, and learn their lines, and he gets to the Saturday Night Live set, and they're just fucking around until Thursday. And then it's like, oh, shit, we got to get a show together. And then, you know, come Thursday, they just throw everything together. People are competing to try to get in the, the early spots and then uh that's why nobody learns any of the words that's why most of the skits don't have endings <laughs> they they spend half the week just fucking around he said well you know i often i often ask the musical question when was the last time that saturday night live was really any good and i have to say maybe the first season <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know after yeah. that, it it became pre it was not very good, not very it's good spotty. at all. It's spotty. It's spotty. Hey, listen. And there were seasons that were just absolutely terrible all yeah. the time. Hey, listen, folks. Last night we had number one uh, a lot of people listening. We have a lot of people viewing it right now, but we also had a full house. Now, where is everybody tonight? Why am I sitting here? It's not that I don't mind these two people. I think the world of them. Uh, but, yeah. uh, you know, it does not make a complete show without a round robin of people talking about stuff. And so if you're not going to call this program, you know, I don't see any reason why I should be doing it. Okay. It's just, it's getting to that. Okay. Um, huh. this, this is the slowest Bummer. it has ever been tonight. This is literally the slowest. Uh, is there something on? Is there a sports and sporting event? I don't think something? so. I doubt it. You know, uh, something there. I don't know. The Yankees were getting killed. And uh, uh, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Mars is slowly moving away from Earth. So you know, it isn't that? Isn't everybody out looking for Mars? Uh, I got a good photograph of it last night. Yeah, that was. I saw it. Yeah, on your I saw page. That. No, but I got a. I, I got one that I haven't put up on the page. Where it's yeah. like round and red, and you. you I got a tree in the way. I can't see it. 
<clears throat> well, then go outside and look around the tree. Well, it's in the neighbor's yard. I'm going to have to go up on my roof. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you if you get that that uh, that uh, star, what is it? What I call the program? Yeah. Star or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, that program uh, is perfect. It is just perfect. Yeah. Um, it's called. Wait a minute. It's called. Let me. I get downloaded it. it. Night good. night sky. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Night sky. Yeah, there there you go, folks. There there it is. Uh, yeah. And and what it does is it shows you the night sky. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, let me, let me uh, bring up my. I have to get some stuff out of the way. Let me bring up my camera here, uh, and I can show the people out there the night sky. Um, okay. I, mean, I, I got too much stuff in the way. I got too little room here. Uh, anyway, um, let me get uh, go here. No, that's not. That's what I wanted. Okay. Uh, and it, it's a program. Here it is. Look at it. I, I can. Of course, I got too much light coming up there. But you see how I can? It shows the night sky, and wherever you move, it kind of you know goes in that direction. And uh, you can you can literally it shows where Mars is, and then you can look out your window and or wherever you are and just it, it, take what you find here. And, and look up. Like, for instance, I would imagine if I go like this, well, there's Jupiter, and there's Saturn, and there's Mars. And so Mars is in that direction tonight, right outside my uh, my uh, window, yeah. and that would be about where it should be. It's called. When I was using mine, it was a little off. I think I need to calibrate the compass on my iPhone. Could be, but it, 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 it's called Night Sky, and it's yeah. pretty good. Oh, here, uh, look, uh, calling from Thailand. It's Keenan calling tonight. Hello, Keenan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, good. I'm going to put you, I'm riding a taxi, so I'm going to put, hopefully switch the camera around. Oh, okay. Let you guys see the sights. <laughs> okay, well, but turn, I'm gonna turn, you, turn yeah. off the microphone because it might be too familiar. Okay, you, you have to turn the camera on, though. Okay. Uh, 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 you know where you turned it on last night? I think I'm figuring it out. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, and turn and turn it side. Yeah, and turn it sideways. Turn it sideways like so this. we. It, yeah, there we yeah. go. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna put on mute. Okay. Is, and, that, is it too much noise for you? Uh, uh, no, it's fine. Actually, okay. if it gets to be too noisy, I'll let you know. There we okay, go. Perfect. He, he's in a taxi cab, ladies and gentlemen, in Thailand. I'm going to um, my wife's old neighborhood where she lives. We're gonna go shoe shopping yeah. for Thai shoes. Now I, uh, I, 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 I assume it's Bangkok, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ba uh, that that is an old joke, you know. Uh, ba uh, <laughs> Bangkok? No, you. Yeah. So, uh, look, look. You know, you, you you go to a country. Here you are. We're in Bangkok, Thailand, and what are we going past a Volvo dealership? You know. It's, you, you just don't feel like you're in some exotic land, you know, with people with rings on their necks and things like that, uh, doing this kind of thing. You know. Wait, wait a minute. I, I, you know something? I didn't switch back. Uh, there we go. There we go. I didn't switch back so they couldn't see you. Um, so what you're looking at... Is the at, video breaking up? A little bit, you know, but... Uh, yeah. But hey, you know, uh, a few years ago we couldn't do this. All right, so I know it's amazing. Yeah. So uh, you know, imagine if you weren't moving, uh, if the car weren't moving, we'd probably get a little better picture. But it's, it's fine. It's getting blurred now, right? Yeah, no, it's fine. We see it. It's, it's, it, fine. it's choppy, but what the hell? Uh, for a while there, I wasn't even showing it. I had the picture of me, and I forgot to go back to the picture of the. Uh, of the Skype this is a, wall. This is a funny story, but yesterday when we were in traffic, our, our taxi driver fell asleep. What? <laughs> our taxi driver fell asleep while we were waiting and sitting in traffic. I hope the car was stopped. Well, we were stopped, but the other cars were moving around us after a while. <laughs> and did you, and did you, you woke him up? Well, he eventually woke up. So. Uh, he eventually <laughs> woke up? You mean you didn't, you didn't feel compelled to wake Thank him God. up? Yeah, he finally woke up. 
it was a good laugh. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> like after how long? A few minutes? It, it was probably about maybe about a minute or so. Uh, oh god. And it wasn't even Uber, right? <laughs> no, it wasn't Uber. They have they don't have Uber here. They have Grab. Oh, they, they have what? It's called Grab. G R A B. Grab. Wow. Yeah, like. Uh, yeah. Grab yourself. Oh, grab, uh, 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 grab a cab. Things like yeah, that. grab a cab. We're going past, past some place that has a lot of flags. What is that? The future begins here. Boy, I don't see anything that oh. I can't read. What is this? Are it's you actually, really? It's actually a building they're putting up a condo tower. Are you really in Bangkok or are you just putting us on? Because it's actually it a, a plushie dog for Shaggy takes a oh, chance. Here's, Video the uh, picture of uh, on Facebook of the guy, taxi cab driver falling asleep. Oh, there we go. You can see that, folks. <laughs> now wait a minute. Now, now there you are. You have an iPhone X, and yeah, what kind? Yeah. Of, what phone are you using to do this? What I'm using iPhone X. Well, yeah, but I love the phone. But the phone you phone. just showed us was the iPhone was an iPhone X. Yeah, it was my my uh, my best friend's uh, phone. He, uh, he took a uh, scope, showed us a screenshot of on Facebook. Yeah. Boy. Okay. Now, now this is starting to look like maybe we're in a foreign country. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. There, I just saw a Seven Eleven. Yeah, the Seven Elevens are all over the place. You know. And they're, they're oh, the best thing. Oh, oh look! Places. There's a guy on a motorcycle giving us the V signal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get a shot of a family on a on a moped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take my. Yeah, the only thing that 7-Elevens don't have are Slurpees. They don't got Slurpees out. No, you know why? No, they no don't Slurpees. in China either. Why? Because in Asian countries like that, correct me if I'm wrong, Keenan, they don't like ice. Holy jeez! Am I right, so Keenan? Keenan, can you hear me? You know, it's amazing. Most of our show is outdoors today. You've got uh, you've got uh, 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 Ray walking and Keenan in his uh, in the cab. Are you? Can you hear me, Keenan? What was that? Keenan, can you hear me? Uh huh. Yeah. No. What I said to you was the reason why 7-Eleven doesn't have Slurpees is in Asian countries. I know this was true in China. They don't like ice. Yeah, you know, they, well, they have iced coffees and stuff like that, so I'm not too sure exactly if, if the ice, if the ice, you know, is an issue with them, because when we go to um, restaurants and stuff, they have buckets of ice, you know, for beers and, and, and water and stuff, so it's, um, it's not, it's not a problem with the Thai people. Well, in, ch really. in, in China, um, they start off the meal not with ice or whatever they don't use ice uh it's warm water hot it's water, hot right? water yeah and you that's, drink... what I do at, that's what i do at home too i drink hot water more than um cold water what to, for before starting a meal yeah or generally throughout the day i don't drink too much cold water because i want to just keep my um, intestines healthy, you know. <laughs> well, there, 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 there's some reason why they do hot water, and I can't remember what it is exactly, but they say the cold water is not good for your insides. Yeah, it helps with digestion and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah. So that's why no Slurpees in 7-Elevens. I went to the 7-Eleven in Beijing and uh, did not find oh, a yeah, Slurpee yeah. machine. Yeah. Um, They're building lots of condos here. Uh, Maybe they don't want it to get ice headaches. <laughs> <laughs> Brain freezes. Yeah, yeah. Um, now let's see here. Now that see now if you showed me that I'd go okay. We're in Thailand. Okay, there's some foreign writing there. Uh, but where are you exactly in Bangkok right now? And where are you going? I get, I get, can you hear? Can you me? hear the music in the background? Yeah. Okay. Is it too loud for you? No. I can no put but where's that coming from? It's coming from the taxi driver's radio. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> is it? Is it the latest? Uh, the latest tunes from uh, in, um, in Thailand? Unfortunately, I can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> Do you understand the language? Just very little. Very little. 
So I depend on my wife to uh, do all the communication. So in, in other words, for instance, your, your parents were from Thailand, right? No, I'm Chinese, actually. Oh, you're Chinese. Oh, okay. Yeah, my, my father was from China and my mom's from Hong Kong. Oh, okay. Fine. Fine. I love See it. all the um, scooters going by? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. There are probably more scooters than there are cars, I would imagine. Yeah, they're zipping in and out of traffic. It's the easy, easiest way to get around. It's also the easiest way to get killed, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you see many accidents? Are there many accidents there, or does everybody tend to avoid everybody else? I haven't seen too many, but I've seen a lot on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But during the, the Thai New Year's yeah. in April, there's a lot of accidents because a lot of Thai people, they drink, and, you know, they're drinking, driving, don't mix, of course. So usually that's when a lot of okay, high so death rates. You're, so you're Chinese. Do, do you speak uh -huh. Chi any Chinese at all? Pardon? Do you speak any Chinese at all? Yeah, I speak Cantonese. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So now the question so. would be, here you are in Thailand, which is an Asian country. Is there any carryover in the languages? <laughs> yeah, some things, like um, like the numbering system. The, the numbers are almost the same. Yeah. Um, some basic stuff like, you know, coffee and tea is almost the same like some of the um like vegetables and and poultry like chicken is the same almost sounds the same yeah so it's not that bad so you could understand a big row of suitors you can understand a little bit of it a little bit yeah 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 because i went to of course when i have to when i went to, to learn when i went to china what i found was um, was difficult was learning any of the language at all yeah. Uh, it is such a different language, those Asian languages, from what yeah. you are used to as, as an Anglo, that it's very hard to learn. And I only learned like five words in the whole time I was there. <laughs> one was one was Ni Hao, which is hello. Uh -huh. One what, another one was uh, 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 Bing, which meant ice. It's ice. Ice. Uh -huh. See, you know what I'm saying. And uh -huh. uh, then the other one, which was very helpful to me, was booyah. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, it means uh, what I what, supposedly what it means. I went booyah. Somebody told me how to say that. It meant get away from me. Yeah, it's actually. Um, let me see if I if I can pronounce it. Uh, um, booyah, booyah. Yeah, booyah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like get away from me, like because no, you you would. It's actually booyah. Ooh, yeah. It's Ooh, yeah. Because I would, that, I would yeah. go to these places, you know, uh, uh, tourist places, and these people would come up and keep trying to sell you stuff. And you'd want them yeah. to go away because they were bugging the hell out of you. If you just said no, they just kept bugging you. But if you went booyah, yeah. they, they, uh -huh. they went away. So that was did another yeah, word I into, learned. Did you ever run into, like, when you're in, in the main streets where there's a lot of massage parlors, the hawkers would run up to you and try to pull you? try to take you into one of those parlors. No, I, I didn't you, know there were hookers that's in China. go away. <laughs> I didn't know there were hookers in China. Where are we getting that wind from? Are we getting it from you, Ray? Ray? Yeah, it was from me. I'm tr I'll mute. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, we were getting wind from Ray. Uh, gee, Tony, I, don't you and I feel like we're out of it here? We're not going anywhere. I should have taken my <laughs> show outdoors today. Uh, you know. I, kind of, I was hot today. I was watching the neighbor's puppy when he went away, so they let me use the pool a little bit next door. Really? They, they had a little above ground pool, so I was just reading. I went to the pool. They have yeah, a swimming nice. pool? It was, it was hot. In, today. in New York City, they have a swimming pool? No, no. My next door neighbor has a little pool. Like, oh, you mean like a wading pool? Uh, no, it's like a four footer. You know what I should do? I should take my camera out there and go in the pool. I can put my light on. Wow. Oh, there's your gas. There's a normal gas station. As I say, and a Mickey know, D's. And a Mickey D McDonald's. Boy, yeah, we do I feel like we're in a foreign country. <laughs> I feel more like we're in a foreign country looking at Ray's video. You know. Ray's jogging somewhere. Hey, where's Phil tonight? I thought he was calling. Phil, Phil Our is not feeling Our country does feel well. foreign, though. <laughs> huh? Well, the USA does seem foreign to us now. Yeah, let me. No, you were saying porn in uh, hookers in China. 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I, it's I never. It's, it's, here is like the and shoreline. Yeah, if you go to like, like behind this fence, you got behind this oh, fence. Yeah. Wait a minute. Behind oh. this fence is private property, and uh, if you draw, when people go duck hunting, whoever owns this. Mm -hmm. They open this up and they go to the end and they duck hunt. And it's like 10 minutes from my house. And so like sometimes you're walking around here and you're hearing people shooting ducks down at the end there. I have to cut this really I weird. Take the door. Are you going to leave us? We only got three of us and you're leaving us? I apologize, but she's barking. Okay, well, uh, it, sorry. you're not the one that should apologize. The people who are not calling tonight are the ones that should apologize. Uh... Let me see. So we we've just lost Tony, folks. We could use another another person. Actually, the whole show is outdoors tonight. If if that's if you're if you're watching this, if you're listening to the if you're not watching it and you're listening to it, well then you probably should be watching it. Let's see. Is anybody listening? Yeah, we got tons of people listening. Tons of people watching. Uh, I just don't know why nobody's. Fuck Colin. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here comes, here comes Renee Collins. Listen to this. What? Look at this. We got, we, we got Ray outside, okay, in California. We've got Keenan uh, on the streets of Bangkok, Thailand. And we've got Renee coming to you live and direct from Hawaii, from the Big Island. H how you doing, Renee? It's nice, but it's gray outside, so it's wonderful to see both Ray and also Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's clear over there on both sides of me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're getting a we're getting a full. Uh, uh, so so uh, this show is really quite international tonight. Uh, I, uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you something I really like, uh, uh, Renee. Uh, I have. Do you have uh, Apple TV? And it, do you notice those screensavers they have? Yeah, we were talking about that the other night. The, to, the, wow. it, it, it was, uh, quite a few of them were done on the Big Island. Oh, I, it's just, it's all wow. I, the, the amount, and to see it in a 75-inch television, it's yeah. still as clear as day. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, but, I mean, those are some beautiful videos they made. And, and uh, the ones in Hawaii are all from the Big Island, so all I could think of was you. Yeah, oh, thank you. And James. And James. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, some nice beaches there. It's a beautiful island. Hey, James, I'm going to be in Hilo on Tuesday. Oh, okay. How far away is, he, you know. how far away is Hilo from you? Well, it's only about two hours, but it, that James lives at the helicopter. I'm taking a helicopter ride, yeah. and the helicopter rides out of Hilo. I'll tell you, Keenan. Keenan, you might mute because the music is starting to kind of drown okay. Renee. Okay, all right. So mute, but come in and talk to us whenever you want to. Don't don't feel shy about doing that. Uh, in case uh, you just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in your upper left-hand corner is a man walking his dog named Ray Renati. He's uh, in California. Uh, in the upper right, you have got Renee, uh, and uh, she's in Hawaii on the Big Island. And uh, and then down at the very bottom there, Keenan has checked in from Bangkok. Uh, <laughs> we're seeing all the advertising on the side of trucks now. Now I can't read any of that, okay? Did I just, is it left to right? Wait, or wait a minute. Did I just see the word? Now, hold on a second. Keenan, did I just see the word on that bus, Botox? Um, yeah. I think you did. They do a lot of surgery here. <laughs> elective surgery. And yep. For I'm some so, reason, it's not that expensive. There we go. Wait a minute. It's, it's coming up. Wait a minute. No, maybe, maybe this isn't the truck. But, uh, yeah, this is for eggs. Us. There's only eggs or something. It's for uh, eggs. Albumin. I see the word albumin. That would be eggs, yeah. Yeah, Gee. Botox is 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 world worldwide. Yeah. Anywhere you have a cow, you've got the ability to do Botox. Really? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, boy, that really. Um, uh, but I, you know, it, it kind of makes you feel good, doesn't it? When you when you're in a country and there's a whole bunch of writing you absolutely don't understand, and then you see a word you do, <laughs> and you suddenly think, hey, I'm getting to know the language. You know? Yeah, yeah. 
But Alex, you kind of harped on yourself and said when you were in China, you only learned like five words. You weren't in China that long. So five words is still not bad. I can't remember the other three. That's the problem. <laughs> Ni hao. Okay. Uh, 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 Keenan, how do you say thank you? Oh, uh, Pick a language. In, in Thai or? In Chinese. Thai is, in Chinese, it's Dolce. What? Dolce? But see, I speak I speak Cantonese. You were oh. you were in the Mandarin speaking oh. portion. Of China. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, that's the, the problem. The Mandarin speaking por- people in the mainland don't understand what I'm saying in Chinese. Yeah. Which is funny. Oh, that was a Botox truck right there. The one you're showing us right now is where I saw There's the word. honey. Oh, it's for honey? honey? Okay. How well, do you honey. say it in, in Viet- wait, we're in Taiwan. So how, how do you say it in Taiwanese then? Kapun Krap is in Thai. So almost Captain Crunch. So ca- say it again, please. Um, Kapun Krap. See, Kapun there's Krap. two. The guys say it differently. The girls say it differently. It's a different okay. um, ending word. So the girls would say um, Kapun Ka, which Ka is for the girls to say. Krap is the, what the guys say. Yeah. But I think I learned so, how to I learned how to say thank you, but I think I've forgotten how to say thank you in Chinese. But ni hao is hello and goodbye. Um, uh, so you don't assign I think it's a she she, right? In Mandarin. It, it, what she, is, she, she? Some yeah, right? some she, she. she, she. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey Alex, if you think uh, Mandarin is hard, you should try to learn Thai. That is ridiculous. Really? It's so hard. Oh my god. And then Names, you can't pronounce the names. Well, apparent, apparently, Keenan hasn't learned much Thai because he says he has to have his <laughs> wife. He, no, he has to have his wife to do the translating for him. Yeah. Um, let's see here, they, honey. I see. See now, I speak Thai. Taiwan, I can speak in Thailand. I, you know, she's a very beautiful lady. That woman on the picture. She's well, yeah, attractive. because it's, she's everything. This is the issue. Uh, if you have that porcelain skin, you see that is very wanted yeah. in in most of the world. And the, on the other side of it, the beautiful creamy skin that uh, 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 the darker skin uh, atones as well. So it's yeah. absolutely beautiful. But the big thing about both of those those genres is that they don't have wrinkles very often or very little. So everybody in between ends up with all the wrinkles. So if you're a, a, a person with dark skin pigment, you will have less wrinkles. And then these uh, uh, beautiful women in Asia who have a very porcelain look to them, that they don't have many wrinkles either. So Even uh, when they get old? I've seen very old yeah. Chinese women that look very wrinkly. Uh, Renee, um, I think it's because they stay out of the sun. I mean, my... Oh, <laughs> Yeah, my 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 uh, girlfriend from college, she's Chinese, and she never stayed out of the sun. And I saw her a couple months ago, and her skin is just awful. And really? I was completely taken aback. Yeah. Wow. But all, all the Asian women in my neighborhood here, when they go out and walk, they always cover their face. There's the word Botox just hands. went by a while ago. It's not now, but I see it on so, the show it's going out right now. I hope it doesn't get dark because I'm going to walk over to a place where there's a piece of the Berlin Wall in the parking lot of some company over here. Oh, Re- cool. Really? And it's only like 200 meters away. So uh, By the way, get- hello to yeah, Ke- it's amazing. A, a good evening to Kevin. How are you, Kevin? Hey, Kevin. Good evening. How are you? We're, we're just fine. You've been, uh, you've been calling late the last couple of nights. You've been like doing stuff and... Yeah, I was at a meeting tonight. A, a, a meeting? Rushed home to get on the uh, Gabnet show tonight. Good, because we were having a little trouble here, having a, having enough people. But look what I got. Uh, Uh-oh. Uh, 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 and, oh. and what was going to cost oh. me 110 bucks, I got for free. Congratulations. Well, how did you get it for free? <laughs> I called them up and told them that they were going to charge me 110 bucks for it, and they said, come by and get a free sample. And I said, okay. What, where is it, nice you move. called the company or you called your doctor? My doctor. Oh, oh, and he. What is it? I can't. Oh, the move. I can't see it. What is it? It's sure it's prep. It's a bow, bowel movement prep oh. kit. Oh it's, yeah, I just paid an it, arm and a leg for that. It's the exact same one they were going to charge me for at CVS. Why does it so, cost so much? You know, there's this other stuff, the citrate. 
Yeah, that's well, in that's a little bottle down. about that big. That. Yeah, yeah, and I the, wrote it down. Yeah, the uh, so, uh, sodium. What's it called? Sodium citrate or orange citrate? Yeah, magnesium. The magnesium citrate, yeah. citrate costs yeah. like three dollars, four dollars a bottle. Yeah, it takes so I'm two. Go bo- get that. It takes two and, bottles. And you do I, one the they, night before. Call, I, the, the the pharmacist told me to go get this this uh, coupon, so I went and got the coupon, and that knocked it down to like seventy five or sixty five bucks. And I went, well, 65 bucks. My wife tried to pick it up, and it was like 45 And I said, no, no, no. So they said, well, let's call your doctor and see if we can get a little cheaper. And my doctor called me the other day and said, you were complaining at the pharmacist. And I said, yeah. I said, this is a freaking it's a damn juice. And no, they no said, what well, it is is they're, char- they're, they're charging you $100 to get diarrhea. Yeah, really. I mean, oh, I, can, I can work that's... that out myself, I think. <laughs> and, and that's not diarrhea. That's a full-fledged cleaning of your eyeballs in the back I, I, way. I can, I can run down to Taco uh, Bell and, oh, and work they, that out real quick. They, they tell you, keep doing it till you, till you run clear. And, uh, <laughs> and, and and they include your blood in that as well. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I cleansed out so well, I actually passed the dinner I was going to have that next night. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. There she is again. There she is. There's that. About a product that actually works really well for once. Wait a minute. There's the beautiful. There's the beautiful. There's the beautiful bee woman, and all I horrible. All I want to know, and and what is it? It's an ad for honey, right, Keenan? Well, I maybe you can't hear me. Honey, honey and Botox, I believe. Honey and Botox honey and on the Botox. same bus. It's like a serum. Oh, you're thinking so it's you're honey putting... serum. Honey serum, and so the oh, word. No. What's they a... took out the Berlin Wall piece. Oh man, what, what... it was right here for years. Oh. Damn it! Where are... Wait, Sorry. you're in. I'm in Palo Alto. There's a there's a place where somebody had the Berlin Wall right there. Yeah. He said the Berlin Wall. It's gone. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh well. Son of a bitch. So you know what people? So all of the weird shit. Speaking of speaking of plastic surgery shit, people over here are getting their blood uh, pumped. They're pumping oxygen into their blood on a weekly basis. (laughs) Wait a minute! I just got a thing. I just got a thing. I just got a thing from Tim Albright that says uh, that. uh, Hold on a second. Let me let me go to it. Uh, Tim Albright, uh, that uh, the radio guy, Art Bell, died, but I thought he died several weeks ago. No, he died April 13th in Pahrump, but the Clark County Coroner's Office says a mix of four drugs killed him. Uh, he died of an overdose of drugs. This was Art what Bell. What were the four drugs? Huh? What were the four drugs? Uh, I don't know. I mean, let me see if uh, they, I can get the bigger uh, amount of the story. You know who Art Bell was, don't you, all of right. you? They used to run this program all night where loonies would call him up and talk about taking sh- trips in spaceships and things like that. Wait a minute. Come on. See, I've decided those flat earther people, yeah. they just want to ride in space, and they'll just say that it's flat earth until you prove it. So we'll shoot him up into space, and they got a free ride, and then they'll say, oh, yeah, it's not really flat. He died of an accidental overdose of prescription drugs. Uh, he died April 13th in his bedroom of his Pahrump home at the age of 72. The coroner's office determined he had four prescription medications in his system, the opioids oxycodone and hydrocodone, diazepam, often marketed as Valium, and a muscle relaxant, the Caris pod- Prodal. Uh, chronic obstructive. Oh, now it keeps changing here. Uh, right, chronic well, obstructive mm-hmm. pulmonary disease and hypertension also were part of the problem. So, mm. anyway, uh, the drugs. So he had taking, two codon drugs. Yeah, he was yeah. taking pros. He was taking uh, was Percocet getting. and Valium and huh? and oxycodone. What is the other one? Oxycodone. Yeah, but didn't you say there was two oxycodone or there was two no, codons, there was, right? Yeah, 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 yeah but one of, one of the oxycodone and uh, hydrocodone, which is Percocet and Valium. Yeah. And then he was also taking Valium, which is diazepam. Yeah. Uh, and then he was taking relaxant Carissa Protol, 
and then oxycodone. So he, they, yeah. he, uh, you know. Uh, that's that's kind of a lethal mix of, of fucking drugs. Yeah, whatever yeah. else that other one was. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that, Tim. I, uh, uh, you know, not one of my favorite radio shows, but uh, what would happen is when in the old days when you were driving down from, oh, say, Reno in the middle of the night, and you, yeah. there was nothing on the radio. There was always Art Bell, and he was talking to, always talking to some guy about taking a trip in a spaceship, how the Martians came down and got him, and they anal probed him. Uh, Yeet. Why is it always anal probing? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a, a thing on the part of people who like to be picked up by Mar Martians. had a preoccupation with people's asses, so, you know. Yeah, I find that really hard to believe, considering they're... If they've got a spaceship that got to us before we got to them, then they know which end talks. Now, here's a story. It, it goes along with something we were talking about the other night. Uh, and uh, who was it? Um, I think somebody like Tim was talking about Sinclair Broadcasting and that we should shut them down and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, why? You know. They, you know. Why? Well, yeah, you said why? You said why? Yeah, Let why? Go. Why? It's a, you know, because yeah. if if you get rid of Sinclair, somebody else is going to come along and do the same fucking thing. You know, it's not like you're. It, it, I love that Botox. It's a big deal over there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, a number of television station groups are investigation by the U.S. Justice Department over alleged collusion in the setting of advertising rates. Now that's very much against the law. Okay, like if I had a radio outfit and I got together with another radio outfit and that outfit went to another outfit and we all got together and said, well, let's, let's up our prices and let's keep them there. That's against the law. Well, the latest is a Mobile, Alabama law firm that bought broadcast advertising time and is suing a half a dozen station groups claiming that coordination between their sales teams artificially drove up the prices of spots. Variety reports the lawsuit was filed earlier this week in federal court named Sinclair Tribune, which Sinclair, by the way, is trying to buy, Gray Television, Techna Incorporated, Hearst Communications, and Nexstar. And the plaintiffs are seeking class action status. Uh, the report quotes the lawsuit alleging that the stations unlawfully shared information and coordinated efforts to artificially inflate prices for television commercials. The suit well, nothing's going to happen. What? Nothing's going. Nobody. Nobody cares. The all of our laws. If if Trump's on the side of that law. You can shoot somebody in the middle of New York City, and Trump isn't going to do yeah, a Yeah, I don't think Trump has any, 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 uh, you know, any uh, skin in the game here. Outside he, of the fact that he probably is pro Sinclair, since Sinclair is pro Trump, you know. Right. So, uh, but it, you know, the Tribune, yeah, Hearst Communications, uh, who knows where they lie, you know. But nevertheless, uh, uh, Sinclair's been involved in this. Uh, and um, look how cute! Sorry. <laughs> what? Oh, the doggy? No, it, the, he's got his little girls with him uh, oh, in oh, the taxi cab. Oh, in the taxi. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't watching that. There we go. My taxi cab, gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, and his wife too. Okay. I'm sorry. I saw the little girls first. I didn't see his wife. Is, is that your wife, uh, uh, Keenan? Yeah, my wife and two daughters. Ah, uh, that's what I saw. I won't mention the graffiti. I about, we're gonna go to post office. Okay. Yeah. Hey, by the way, that Botox was like three bucks. Good night. No, <laughs> That's my best friend. <laughs> oh, really? Nice guy. Yeah. yeah, it's his birthday. Birthday tomorrow. I told him, I'm going to be in Bangkok for your birthday. You want to come? And then he booked his tickets right away. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. Wow. Smart man. Yeah, we're following the family. Wow. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, that that's what's happening with Sinclair. There was something I wanted, I wanted to say about that. There was an additional thing, but I, I can't remember now. Uh, I'll, I'll remember it probably long after the show is over with. Uh, and here is, oh, I know what it was. Yeah, we were saying as long as, as uh, they're su suing Sinclair, you know, when we talk about people suing people, I really think that Les Moonves, to, to kind of, because he's got the money to do it. 
should sue a Ronan Farrow. No. He right. should file a suit against Ronan Farrow, saying what you're reporting is 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 uh, uh, an is ex it? exaggeration or whatever he wants to say, and that I'm suing you uh, because uh, I you know you're you're here ruining my career. I make millions and millions of dollars a year, and you're screwing that up. So I'm suing you. What if it's all true and then he can't do that because it's I, I, all true I think, and I think he'd look like a no, jackass? No, I, th I think somebody should sue Ronan Farrell because I don't think he does do as much due diligence as he should do, you know. And then he reports, some of the reports he does uh, are uh, sources that refuse to be named, you know. That doesn't, I don't. Uh, uh, this all, a lot of, a lot of what Ronan Farrow does is innuendo. You know what, I think that the stuff that he has brought forward has enough backing on it that I'm going to believe the new stuff that he brings forward. Why? Because why, I don't why see anymore? A lot of, that would be a like me people. saying that I refuse to believe it because it's Ronan Farrow. I'm just saying that I think Ronan Farrow's uh, 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 stake in the game is the fact that this is how he's making a living now and becoming well known is to come up with this crap. And that I think yeah. he is not doing the same kind of due diligence that other reporters would do before reporting these kinds of stories. But nobody without a name has been able to get these story, stories out in the front. And it's taken that name to do so. What, what, what do you mean? I mean, uh, in, the, in one case with uh, Moonvez, a woman recently about 2005, uh, 2015 went to the Los Angeles police and reported that he had done whatever to her and when did he do it 30 years ago and of course they had to say sorry there's nothing we can do about it there is a, such a thing as a statute of limitations you know and and this so is exactly because she didn't feel coming forward about it within uh, what what's what's the state what's in that state that she did what how many years do you have five years you know something i really wish that a lot of these women would have come forward earlier uh, you know what the this is what you guys are forgetting it took almost 80 women to be raped and and forced to do sex acts to bring Harvey Weinstein down. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second, hold 60, on a second. It took 60 wait a minute, wait a minute, women wait a minute, wait a minute. To, bring down, to bring down Bill Cosby. And what did he do to those 60 women? He drugged them and raped them. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you say that, do you women. have personal knowledge that all those assertions are true? No, then but I'm I think going with why didn't you believe one of us instead of making 60, 59 of us get raped and drugged well, I, just because I you wish, didn't want I to wish, believe a woman. I wish one of you would have come forward a hell of a lot earlier. Because, did, because okay, in, so the case, in the case, in the talking, case, when you're talking about that Larry Nassar asshole, yeah. they have been flying though, filing those lawsuits for a long Absolutely. time, but not one buddy, no, no man took it seriously. And that's the same, uh, so who is it? No, but that's, uh, but with Nasser, the with, Weinstein. with Nasser, they managed to get him from under the, um, what do you call it? The, um, uh, under, the, under the wire of what the, you know, statute of limitations are. I think in the case of a woman who didn't say anything for 30 years, uh, I'm sorry. Really? Cause it, you know, does that make her less raped? Oops. Uh, well, it doesn't make her any. <laughs> he's got I'm ear. Sorry, he's, I, I just saw your daughter. No, he's he's got earphones on. She, his daughter can't hear this. <laughs> God. Is, is she any less raped, or or is she any more raped? Might be the other question as well. Well, why did you believe us the first time? Go ahead. What, I'm going to go now, so I'll try calling tomorrow. Hey, thanks listen. Thanks for letting me on. I got, hey, thank you for the the travel log that we've been able to uh, to have, oh, courtesy no of you, Keenan. We really. Well, I'll try calling tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. See you guys thank later. You, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Care. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. No, I mean we could argue about this uh, forever, but part of this is is that what I what bothers me is that there are going to get people caught in this trap, guys, who are going to be. Uh, uh, unreasonably, uh, uh, somebody's going to make unreasonable assertions about them that are not true, 
that get their careers hurt just simply because somebody said these things. Why you know, is it supposed to take 80 women to get sexually assaulted uh, 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 look, before you believe you're, us? Look, you're using... You're, Why 80? Wait a minute. Why 80? You're, you're using Why not one? Wait a minute. You're using the extreme. No, you're, I'm no, not. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's, Hold on a second. There are a lot of guys lately who have been accused and lost their jobs who were only right. accused and, of and doing so one the women who got sexually assaulted probably didn't want to go back in the office anymore no, because God, the HR you didn't you're not believe listening them. to me and so they lost Renee, their job and Renee, had to go find something you're, you're somewhere not, else you're not listening to me what no I, you're saying the same thing but you're saying it no, on the other no, side no. you're not what saying, I am that saying women lose their what job I for this am saying, too. Uh, I am saying is that uh, the uh, uh, you know that the it, that it, we're going to find that there were several people. Like for instance, Chris Hardwick was accused by a former girlfriend, and he was taken off the air for many months and almost lost his job at AMC until they finally did an internal investigation and found out that these things were baseless. But in the meantime, he stood accused. And everybody right. looked at him as Your being life accused. Was so much difficult while he was going through the proper legal oh, channels geez. that are required. When a, whether or not the assault is true or not, the reason we have a legal system some, is to prove that. If so, he went through that for a couple months. But you, this is not fair. When you well, if it, went, if it happened, if the same point. thing happened to a woman, you wouldn't be sitting here going we 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 like oh gee too tough for her. No, pick one. You know. How many times do I mean, so this is the deal. It's either women are getting assaulted or partners are are for the most part the But the you see you're picking out you're picking out the Harvey Weinstein situation, which by the way, you know, he has not said he was guilty of any of those things so far, and nobody has proved that he is, all right? So we have to use the word here continually alleged. I learned sure. that in the broadcasting business. You use the term alleged. Now, in the case of Bill Cosby, in a lot of those cases with women going after him, number one, the statute of limitations had run out. They alleged what he did. The only one they got was somebody who was within the statute of limitations, and they nailed the motherfucker. And I'm happy for that. You know? But shouldn't be we, we asking the question is because of fucking state rights, why is this law different across the United States? Why can't anyone who is sexually abused come back at any point in time when they actually get well, their therapy, choke, and then uh, get their you, mind You together? have to ask well, the question of why are there statutes of limitations on, on anything? You know, a I crime agree. is a crime, and if somebody just, you know, robbed $10 from you and 40 years later you manage to get somebody to believe you and he gets arrested for that stealing of the $10, it should still hold. But no, there are statute of limitations. Why? I can't begin to tell you. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how they, how they came to be. Okay. There's, well, why don't we make the only thing the same across the United no States? There's no statute of limitations on murder. That's about the only thing there's no statute of limitations on. But on these, these, this particular kind of crime, uh, uh, it has to be quite recent in order for it to, uh, to hold. I also don't know, so there's two things you guys, excuse me, men aren't doing. Number one, and this is right at you people, so I'm, I'm, whether it's in, in this particular case, I'm gonna put Patrick in there and I'm also gonna put uh, Phil in there. You men are not separating yourself from the adolescent males and you don't correct the adolescent males so this becomes an issue because you're letting so right now all of those little white assholes are running around thinking that they've got permission to do shit like donald trump has but you're not going to your friends and saying you know what that's a 14 year old girl you just slobbered over and you just said all those nasty things about why don't you back it up until she well gets let me let me just say let me just say something you don't quickly. do any of that you're not an advocate because for we're us. running out of time but i've told the story on this on this program on how i honestly believe i was I was raped on one occasion by a woman, okay? And I, as a male, never made a complaint about it because of the disdain people would hold me in for saying that I'd been raped by a woman. 
you and know, why do you, you think know. women take 30 you, years to come well, and know. that was a man that you just said it so why are you bashing these women that don't I'm feel not bashing anybody I'm not bashing you anybody are, but I'm saying stood I, I'm up for saying Harry Weinstein I, 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 and I, 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 I don't stand up for Harvey Weinstein I think he's a creep yes true. yes right. uh, 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 quick uh, with uh, with uh, uh, I just wanted to dro drop drop in the Terry Crews incident. I don't know if you've heard about the Terry Crews incident. What was the Terry Crews incident? Well, he, he got his junk grabbed and he's fighting that whole thing. And he's a black man. What would have happened if he jumped out and said and, and took on the guy that grabbed his junk? There's yeah, a big situation there. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. that's probably too late to discuss All I'm saying it now, is, is that, you know, uh, yeah, you, Harvey Kevin. Weinstein's a Can I say one thing? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead, <laughs> Ray. Wait a minute. We can't hear you, Ray. We can't hear you. No, still can't hear you. Uh, Muted. There you uh, Ray. Well, we can't hear you. You'll have to call tomorrow night and tell us. Always like doing battle with you, Renee, on this stuff. You're terrific. We love you. You know that. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And I love you guys, too. Yes. And That's why I pick on you. And Phil, too. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, hey, listen. Can you hear me now? Yeah, quickly. What were you going to say? Well, I just, you know, Alex is just talking about the legal stuff. He's not standing up for these guys. And, and there's also a difference between suing somebody and, uh, and charging somebody with a crime. So we got all kinds of different things. Yeah, going on. yeah. Anyway, listen, we got to go because uh, the next show is dying to come on here. Uh, 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 thank you very much to everybody. Keenan for having joined us, and Tony, and Kevin, and Renee, Ray, Renee, and Ray. And uh, gee, uh, good, good having you all here. And I would, uh, would love it if you would all, well, she left before she could do it, but the rest of you wave goodbye, all right? Okay. Uh, that's our that's our little uh, show for tonight. Uh, it started out with almost nobody being here, and then it kind of got nicer and nicer and nicer, and uh, finally we wound up with people like Ray and Kevin, and uh, we had a nice little uh, little group of people here. Thank you all for having called our fine program. Uh, we will be here. Um, let me just hang up on everybody. We'll uh, uh, next is of course the uh, uh, connections with uh with uh i'm i'm having trouble here because i'm trying to get all this stuff together to sign off what what do i want to do next oh yeah i want to say uh oh we ran out of music well let me start the music again hold on a second there we go okay uh, i'm alex bennett jack bishop is next with the intersection eventually uh and uh that will be followed at one o'clock in the morning by uh, connections coming out of Florida. I'm Alex Bennett. Tomorrow night after Damian Chaplin at 9.30, I will return at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.